we should discuss now the heart since it is one of the most important parts of the cardiovascular system. We spent some time with the blood vessels, so now let's take a look at the heart itself. So, <clears throat> as you can see, this is the correct position of heart. You can see that the apex of the heart is slightly tilted towards the front and towards the left side of the body. This would be the left side of the body, this would be the right side of the body. So this is the left, uh, ang left edge of the heart, the right edge of the heart. Okay, the front of the heart and then the back of the heart. Well, when I turn it around, you'll see. Now, <clears throat> um, let's open up the heart like this. Uh, before we open it up, you see these little flaps here look like ears of some type of animal, look like flaps or ear flaps of some type of a, a mammal. Okay, These flaps here are actually on the surface of the atria, which are the chambers. And we call these flaps here the auricles, auricles. Now, we open up the auricles, and inside you will find the chambers here. These two upper chambers are your atria, your atria. So you have right atrium, left atrium. Now, beneath these atria, you have these two other chambers, much larger chambers and they're called the ventricles. This is the left ventricle and over here the right ventricle. So atria and ventricles are just chambers or spaces within the heart. Okay. Now let's take a better look at the atria Okay, and I like to use the right atrium because it has a lot of things pointed out here. Okay, One of the important things that you see with the right atrium is that you see the superior vena cava and the inferior vena cava right here, right here. They empty the blood, drain the blood back into the chamber here, into your right atrium. Right here is the opening of the superior vena cava. Right here you see the opening of the inferior vena cava. Okay. Now, another important thing that you can see from the uh, right atrium or from the left atrium as well, you see this muscle here. See this surface here? It's not smooth. It's not smooth, and it's actually called the pectinate muscle. It's sort of a ridged surface here called pectinate muscle of the atria. Okay. Now, going deeper into the atria, here with the right atrium, you see this little oval or round shape indentation here. This is called the fossa ovalis. And at some point during embryological development, the fo during fetal development as well, the fossa ovalis was actually an open window that communicated the right atrium to the other atrium on the left side. But when you're born and in your adult life, that foramen or window actually closes off and forms a fossa ovalis because of its shape slightly oval, fossa ovalis. There is also another small little opening right here, tiny little opening, which is for the opening for the coronary sinus. I'll show you the coronary sinus soon, but just keep that in mind. This is the opening of the coronary sinus. Uh, you also have uh, over here now the opening that leads into the lower chamber, which is your ventricle. Okay? So this opening leads right into the ventricle. Now, here in the ventricle, we'll go now to the ventricles, we can see that we have uh, a valve there. Okay? A valve. On the right side of the heart, this is the right side of the heart, on the right side of the heart, the valve here is actually called the tricuspid valve because it consists of three cusps one two three three little flaps or cusps so we call this one the tricuspid valve now these valves these cusps of the tricuspid valve okay are anchored down by these little white stringy fibers here okay they're called chordae tendinae and the chordae tendinae are anchored to this special little muscle here, column, column or pillar-shaped muscle here, 
called the papillary muscle. Papillary muscle, papillary muscle. Look like almost like the roots of a tree sticking out of the ground. Okay. Finally, you have this spongy shaped or spongy like uh, holes and surface here within the ventricles. We call that carne trabeculae. Carne trabecula or trabeculae. Okay. Now, <clears throat> separating both ventricles from each other, there is a septum here or a wall. A septum means a wall. And this right here, this whole septum here, is called the interventricular septum, separating the right from the left ventricle. Okay? Now, let's take a look at the left side of the heart. This is our left atrium. Okay? Pectinate muscle. And the left atrium on the inside, deeper inside, has different openings. You have these four important openings that you see right here. Two of them are very deep like this. If you look inside, these four openings are the openings of these, arter of these veins here called the pulmonary veins that we discussed before with the blood vessel model. These are your pulmonary veins, and these are the opening of the pulmonary veins. Okay? Two of the pulmonary veins come from the left lung. Two of the other pulmonary veins are coming from the right lung. If I quickly turn it around just for an instant. Pulmonary veins. Pulmonary veins. Okay? So, they open up here into the left atrium. Now, from the left atrium... Uh, then we go down this way into the ventricle, the left ventricle, and we have another valve here that separates the left atrium from the left ventricle. This valve now consists only of two cusps, two cusps. So we call it the bicuspid valve, sometimes more commonly known as the mitral valve. Either way is correct. Bicuspid valve or mitral valve. In fact, you can even call them the atrioventricular valves because these valves will separate the atria from the ventricles. Okay? Now these valves will open and shut when blood passes through. Okay? And again, the same other features with the tricuspid valve. Here with the mitral valve, you have these same things. You have chordae tendinae. You have papillary muscle. Papillary muscle. Carne or uh, carne trabecula, carne trabecula, okay? And that would uh, show you some of the main parts of the atria and ventricles. Now, there is another important thing here about the atria and ventricles. Here in the ventricles, after the blood has entered into the ventricle, the blood then is pumped up this way past another valve here that leads right into the pulmonary trunk. This valve is called the pulmonary semilunar valve. Pulmonary semilunar valve, therefore this is the pulmonary trunk. So this is, on the, this is coming from the right ventricle. From the left ventricle, you have to look up there carefully, so I'll bend this around this way. Oh. Okay, and in there, you see another semilunar valve. Okay, so from the left ventricle the blood then is pumped up this way past this valve. It's called the aortic semilunar valve. And from there the blood then goes into the aorta. Into the aorta. So semilunar valve, aortic semilunar valve, pulmonary semilunar valve. They actually are uh, called like that because of the valves. The valves are found at the origin or at the base of these two large arteries here. Okay? So, uh, that covers all of these large vessels of the heart. One more time. The pulmonary trunk. This would be your left pulmonary artery, your right pulmonary artery. The aorta, which actually 